I had some high expectations for Ty Montgomery last season, when it looked like he was going to take over James White's role as a receiving back and some RB2 responsibilities. For me, Montgomery always felt like he was destined to be part of the New England Patriots due to his dual threat ability as a wide receiver and as a running back. And more, he was a great special teams guy as a returner and on coverage. This was on display during the 2022 preseason and the first game of the season where Montgomery was clearly going to be max release valve and was going to be a dual threat out of the backfield. Unfortunately, Ty got injured and was put on IR for 2022. Obviously, this shifted the pass catching responsibilities to Stevenson, which burnt him out with about a third of the season left. Clearly losing Montgomery early in the season was a critical hit to the Patriots offense especially since the two rookie running backs, Pierre Strong Jr. and Kevin Harris, were not perfect fit replacements for Montgomery. Well, we're moving closer to camp and Montgomery looked to be healthy. So, he might be ready for a bounce back season, with the possibility of claiming the RB2 spot, along with receiving back on third down. In addition, we might see Ty become one of Bill O'Brien's best weapons this year, with him being deployed in multiple alignments in the backfield, and as receiver. I believe we might see Ty have a resurgent season with numbers we haven't seen since his days with the Packers. First, I will go over Ty's background and abilities. Then, I will discuss why I think we will see him become a critical piece to the Patriots this season. Montgomery played wide receiver at Stanford University, whereas a freshman in 2011, Montgomery contributed on offense and special teams. He had 24 receptions for 350 yards and two receiving touchdowns, to go along with 42 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown. As a sophomore, he finished the season with 26 receptions for 213 yards, 11 kick returns and for 293 net yards. As a junior in 2013, Montgomery was a consensus All-American as a return specialist. He led the nation with a 31.2 yard kickoff return average and scored two touchdowns. In addition, he had 61 receptions for 958 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns to go along with 159 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. As a senior, he took a step back. He had 61 receptions with 604 receiving yards, three touchdowns along with 144 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. He finished his collegiate career with 172 receptions for 2,125 yards and 15 touchdowns. Montgomery was selected in the third round by the Green Bay Packers in the 2015 NFL Draft. He had a solid rookie season, but he was placed on injured reserve on December 21st after sustaining an ankle injury. He finished his rookie season with 15 receptions for 136 yards and two receiving touchdowns. For the first four games of the 2016 season, Montgomery only saw 17 snaps on offense and was held to zero catches. However, during week six against the Cowboys, he began seeing some time in the backfield due to injuries to Eddie Lacy and James Starks. He finished the 2016 season with 457 yards rushing, three rushing touchdowns, 44 receptions for 348 receiving yards. Montgomery started off 2017 really strong but he broke his ribs during week four against the Chicago Bears. He returned against the Minnesota Vikings as a backup to Aaron Jones. Jones went down with a knee injury. Montgomery came back in, had a 37 yard rushing touchdown, but again, left the game re-injuring his ribs. After missing the next two games, he was placed on IR, but not for his ribs, but for an apparent wrist injury. He finished 2017 with 273 yards rushing, three rushing touchdowns, 23 receptions, 173 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. In 2018, in seven games with the Packers, he totaled 26 carries for 105 yards and a rushing touchdown to go along with 15 receptions for 170 yards receiving. Montgomery would be traded to the Ravens with less than an hour left before the trade deadline in exchange for seventh round pick. In six games with the Ravens, he had 83 rushing yards, in 10 receptions for 65 yards. In the wild card round, he had six kick returns for 160 yards. After that season, Montgomery signed with the New York Jets for the 2019 season, where he totaled 32 carries for 103 yards rushing to go along with 13 receptions for 90 receiving yards. 
After that season, Montgomery then signed with New Orleans Saints for the 2020 season. He was placed on injury reserve on September 26th with a hamstring injury, but he was reactivated November 6th. In Week 17 against the Carolina Panthers, Montgomery rushed for 105 yards. On March 6, 2021, Montgomery re-signed with the Saints for another one-year contract. In 2021 season, Montgomery appeared in 14 games and finished with 15 carries for 44 yards rushing, 16 receptions for 95 yards. On March 17th of 2022, Montgomery signed a two-year, $3.6 million contract with New England Patriots. But he was placed on injury reserve on September 13th and underwent shoulder surgery. Essentially, Ty has been productive when he's not injured, which is unfortunately a large percentage of his career. Now, in terms of attributes, when Ty was coming out of Stanford, he was touted to be a likable person with great character. He's a solid athlete with a perfect blend of size, speed, agility, and power to play a running back and a receiver. Ty is roughly six feet tall, 220 pounds. His arms are about 31 inches. His hands are 10 and 1 8. His 40 yard was 4.55. The 10 yard split on that 159. 20 yard split on that was 2.64. His 20 yard shuttle was 4.21, three cone drill 6.97, his vertical 40 and a half, broad 10 1, and his bench was 16 reps. Now that gives us a wide receiver RAS of 7.74, which is decent, but he has a 9.08 RAS as a running back. Although Montgomery plays the majority of his reps in the backfield, He's clearly also happy lining up wide or in the slot. In terms of running ability, Montgomery is actually pretty good at one cut reads or could follow blocker on an ISO play. He is patient and waits for the play to develop. In addition, he knows how to utilize his footwork to make decisive upfield cuts. He displays a good burst and has the potential to escape the first man at the second level. I suggest you go back and watch some of the videos of the running backs performing agility ladder drills last preseason. It is obvious that Montgomery worked with Rashad Whitfield, and it shows on the field too. He has great balance and control. Montgomery is good at using his speed to bounce outside, but generated the majority of his production on runs right up the middle. He is solid in short yardage and in red zone runs. He finishes well and also shows off a nasty stiff arm. As a pass catcher, the majority of Montgomery's production has been on dump off passes and checkdowns. As a wide receiver though, virtually all of Montgomery's production came as a possession receiver on short passes coming over the middle. He does create a lot of downfield separation, so he's most likely going to be used as a possession option. Still, he will be comfortable with route running assignments. He has decent hands and has some impressive catches over the past few years. As a blocker, Ty was a solid run blocker when he was out as a wide receiver and can handle blitz pickup responsibilities as a running back. Last but not least, special teams. He put up great numbers as a return man in college and has been a serviceable one at the NFL level. He has also developed into a solid gunner and a blocker on special teams. Some overall notes to consider, Ty's discipline is good with minimal amount of penalties to his name. Now for the downside, regrettably, Montgomery is very injury prone. So he's probably not going to share a large percentage of the snaps with Stevenson. Ty has had an arm injury, shoulder, groin, head, knee, and multiple ankle injuries over his career. Just about every season contained an injury. Therefore, I don't see him taking on a true RB2 role. Another point to consider is that Ty is a carrier of the sickle cell trait which has sidelined him before and can be a concern in high exertion sports such as football. I've had a few athletes that were sickle cell carriers that required a specific training protocol and were limited in terms of volume and time. So back in 2016, apparently, Ty had a case of gross hematory, which is blood in the urine coming from usually damage to the left kidney and is recognized as a complication of sickle cell. This can be a result of too much exertion. Again, apparently Ty experienced this back in Green Bay. 
the mechanism here is what they call exertional sickling, which is a potentially life-threatening condition resulting from sickling of the red blood cells during intense exercise. Sickling results in some sort of eschema and collapse, where you may experience intense pain, in this case in the kidney, but it can also happen to muscles, which can cause rhabdomyolysis, and other serious metabolic problems. Similarly, there's also the idea that you can get explosive rhabdomyolysis, which is a severe muscle breakdown, which results in the release of muscle contents into the bloodstream. Muscle contents such as myoglobin can cause kidney damage and ultimately kidney failure. Untreated explosive rhabdomyolysis can be fatal. They are typically due to red blood cells sickling and creating what is called a log jam, which you can imagine what that looks like, thus bursting the vessels and damaging the tissue. Or, the patient's not getting enough oxygen due to the sickled red blood cells, and the cells in the tissue are not getting enough oxygen to perform their metabolic processes, and the cells die rapidly, and the tissue dies, and unfortunately, possibly the human. Our protocol for those athletes with sickle cell was usually to limit their efforts to about two minutes. And we used what we call the 90 rule for the weather, meaning no training really above 90 degrees or 90% humidity, or a combination which would get you a 90 degree heat index. Now, I'm not sure if the Patriots have a similar protocol for Ty, but I wouldn't be surprised if they had a hard limit set for him. At least I hope so. We can see why we might see Ty in a limited role. Lastly, Montgomery is 30 years old. I'm not saying he can't do it anymore at all, actually. I think he has plenty of football left him in terms of performance abilities. But we have to consider the points above and how those will be affected by age. Now, I think we can see uh, an idea of reviving Ty this season. The Patriots were expected to employ Montgomery in the running game the passing game, and special teams last season. Again, we didn't get to see that last year. This year, on the offensive side of the ball, Montgomery is neither an early down runner nor a starter level wideout. And for that reason, he should be expected to be used primarily in select passing sets rather than just as a true three down player. Of course, we have Stevenson, but more than that, remember, he has the sickle cell factor. He should not be out there for full series in general. On special teams, he offers some value on both as a returner and on coverage. Now, let's talk about the 2023 roster and where does Ty fit in on the running back and the wide receiver depth charts. Yeah, again, Montgomery is not really a three down player at either position. However, he is experienced at both positions and, and could see significant playing time. At wide receiver, I see him as that third Z behind Juju and Bourne. At running back, he should be the primary receiving option to alleviate Stevenson. The X factor here is Montgomery's versatility because he is respectable at the wide receiver and a dangerous running back. O'Brien will facilitate touches for him in a variety of situations and packages. He could be a nuisance in motion and a constant threat in a plethora of linemen. His value on the offense is not as apparent to some Patriots fans right now. I get it. Although the Patriots appear to be still pursuing Hopkins, Montgomery adds some vital depth to the wide receiver room right now. Keep in mind, Juju, Thornton, and Parker haven't been 100% this preseason. It was basically Bourne, the tight ends, and then Ty, getting a lot of reps. The practice squad guys and the rookies were there, but Ty was reported to be heavily involved as a receiver thus far. That might be because of the injuries but also shows you that the Patriots were looking to him to be pick up some reps rather than just give it to some of the practice squad guys or the rookies. So if the Patriots start the season with a limited receiving core, we can be assured that Ty can at least pick up some of the snaps if needed. Now the running back depth chart is murky at the moment. Yes, Stevenson is the clear number one, but that RB2 role is up for debate and the third down back is not cemented. I think Ty has the third down roll, but he might be getting a few sets as RB2 if Strong and Harris can't take the spot. I still think we might see the Patriots try to get Zeke real cheap for as a comprehensive RB2 and a short yardage guy, but that wouldn't really impact Ty's position in my opinion. What is his special teams value? Again, Montgomery was a solid kickoff returner and a gunner on punt coverage, kick coverage, and also blocked on punt returns. 
Montgomery can be a four-unit special teamer, something that is highly coveted by the Patriots and reduces the need to carry a lot of specialists on the roster. So the Patriots should expect Ty to come in here and there, giving some guys some rest, and also bringing a change of pace on the offense. In addition, he will be able to be a four-unit special teamer. All of this for what? Two million this year? Patriots fans should be all in on Ty, having a full revival this season for a multitude of reasons. I'll be rooting for him. So what do you guys think of Ty? Will we see a resurgence this season? Will he be the primary third down back? Will we see him line up as a receiver? Where is he on the depth chart? What does his stat line look like? Will he get another contract at the end of the season? Or before? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like my content, please like and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.